right. Revelation chapter 2. All right. Good evening to those that are already in. And uh, Revelation chapter 2. I'm going to try not to read it for y'all long. I'm still trying to um, recuperate. Still trying to recuperate. And um, let's put some Did he get my mask? I'm having trouble hearing you. All right, you get loud and clear. Okay, now I don't know why you would. Huh? He forgot. Uh -oh. All right. <clears throat> Can you hear me now? All right, Revelation chapter 2. You probably, y'all, let me cut this phone down because this is, this is a, a, a never ending soul to say that phone I got. All right, Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. We, we, we went into Revelation chapter 2 last week, and let's go into um, a little bit more of it. I seen something on. Um, Can't even remember what. All right, let's let's get um. Let's go, let's, let's pick up at Revelation chapter 2, and let's go ahead and let's just go down into, um, let's go to verse 5. Y'all make sure you got your phones mute, because I can hear in the background, I, I hear, I can hear noises in the background, so just make sure you got your, your phones on mute. I'm trying to pick up where, where I would think would have been a good, a good part. I want to say I did verse 5. I, I want to say I did through verse 5. Mm -hmm. I did through verse 6. Okay, so that makes sense. <clears throat> on verse 6. All right, so verse 7, Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. We've been trying to go through this here. And I, I'm, I'm, let me write myself a note this time. All right, it says in verse 7, it says, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. That's real good right there, y'all. We're walking through Revelation together. Um. It's not something I pre-read or something I pre-studied. So we're just getting revelation as the Lord will give to us together. Um, I love that. That's that's real good right there. Uh, certain things just stick out to me. I'm an avid, you know, reader. And so I read with an intention to understand and, and, and you know, an intent to grab in my heart. So it says here, he that has an ear, <clears throat> let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh, there is an ETH at the word, or at the end of the word overcome, which means continuously. Y'all make sure you got your phones on mute now. Make sure you got your phone on mute. So everybody, no, it's not a struggle to hear me. I'm still hearing background noises. All right. So, all right, we're in Revelation chapter 2, and we're looking at verse 7. <clears throat> And it says to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out right there. Notice the way that's worded. It says to him that overcometh. ETH at the end of the word overcome, which means continue to overcome. He says that's the one I'm going to give to eat of the tree of life. So I need, let me, let me show y'all. Let me see if y'all caught this right here in that. It says you've got to first overcome something. Then he gives you the, the the opportunity to eat up the tree of life. I don't know if y'all caught that like I did. I saw it. See, the issue with us is we don't be wanting to go through nothing. <clears throat> the Lord been dealing with me the past couple of days real hard about that. Real, real hard about that. He was like, Delphine, the process. The process is the issue. People don't want to deal with the process. Because the process can be very, very tough. The process, I'm, you know, process does not feel good. 
It doesn't. It doesn't feel good. But he says to him that overcomes. So that means he's going to be presented or she's going to be presented with some challenges. And once they prove themselves that they have the ability to overcome, then will I give to eat of the tree of life. Now, that's in that's verse 7. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 7, he says, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. The paradise of God. And so verse 8 here. Now, so verse 8 says, and unto the angel of the church in Smyrna, right? This first church, I want to say, let me get back up here, that was Ephesus. So now we're at the second church, Smyrna. Smyrna is this the second church. He says, unto the angel of the church in Smyrna, which I let, which I taught y'all last week, that the angels of the church means like the pastor, the leadership. He says, in Smyrna, right? These things said the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Oh, please catch that right there. Check this out. I know thy works and tribulations and poverty. Then comes back and says, but you rich. Now, contradicts sounds very like it's contradictory. He says, I know your works, I know your tribulations, and I know your poverty. He says, but you're rich. So in other words, what it sounds like, what I catch out of that, the revelation I receive out of that is, is that you can mess around and allow your circumstances. Delphine, you going in there tonight? Going on in. You can mess around and allow your circumstances to cause you to think contrary to what God is saying. God is saying, like for instance, God says that we are the head and not the tail. But we will live our lives as if we are the head. I mean the tail. He would say that we are above only and not beneath. But we will live our lives like we are beneath y'all. So he says, I know your works. I know the things that you're doing. I know the tribulation. I even know the stuff that you're suffering. And I know the poverty. He says, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. So now he's talking to the church in Smyrna, to the angel of the church in Smyrna, to the pastor of the church. He's saying, listen, I know that you got some people among you that say that they are Jews, but they're not. They're really just blaspheming against the power of the Holy Ghost. He says, but, uh, he says, that they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Now check out what he says. You got some that are among you that are saying, you got some that are saying that they are riding with you, but they're not. They are saying, now, this is what they're saying. I'm about to learn to turn, to turn these bells and stuff off on this like I can do on that line. He says, I know, he says, you got some. I want y'all to, y'all check, check this out. Now, these, this is him talking to these, to these churches. He starts at Ephesus. He talks to them about what they're dealing with. Now he's at Smyrna and he says to them, he says, look, you are of the mindset that you have poverty. You, y'all think that you're broke. You think that you are in a less fortunate situation. He says, but really you are rich. You just don't see it because you too busy looking at your circumstances. You too busy looking at your situation so you don't even see the fact that you are rich. I'm telling y'all, you will be amazed how many of us are like that. The Lord has decreed things over our lives, but yet we tend to think that oh, okay, you know, I know God done said it, but still, you know what I'm saying? You must not know what I'm dealing with. You must not see these bills that I got. You must not, you know, you must not know. I got a hair I got these student loans. I got all this kind of stuff and, and all this and that. And he says, look, I see that stuff that's going on, but you are not in poverty. But your mind is telling you that you are. You're actually rich. He says, and I know, I even know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, but are not. And are of the synagogue of Satan, he says. So I see everything that's happening. I see the ones that that are saying they are riding, but they're really not riding. Verse 10 says, fear none of those things. Lord, I love you. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Don't, 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 
Don't you be scared about it. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried. You know that happened with Paul and Silas and Peter. So it's going to cast some of you into prison that you may be tried and you shall have tribulations. Ten days. Ten days. He says, but be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. Can I tell y'all something just so that you understand? There comes a, when you read stuff like that, it comes with a certain element of fear. In other words, you would think in a natural mind, oh, that means I got to go to jail. But listen, always know that you live both in a spirit world and a natural world. You can get locked up in your spirit world. You can be imprisoned in your spirit world. If you are uh, um, if you are someone that is, say, locked, say depression gets a hold of you, it can lock you up, literally cast you into a prison. It says, he says, that he's, look what he says. He says, don't fear none of these things which you're going to suffer, which means that there are going to be some things that's going to rise against you that you have no control over. That, that is just a part of it. You don't have any control over it whatsoever. There are certain circumstances, and we are notorious in life of not liking circumstances. We are notorious for not wanting to deal with situations. Every one of us, don't nobody like to go through nothing bad, not even me. We are notorious for not wanting to face things. And he says in verse 10, this is Revelation 2 and 10, he says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. You don't have any other choice, he says. There's going to be some things that are going to come. He says, behold, the devil shall cast some of you in to prison that you may be tried. It is going to be a test and you shall have tribulations. Notice uh, you ought to celebrate. If you see what I see, you ought to celebrate because it says that you're going to have tribulation, but he give a time period on it. Somebody ought to celebrate God with me for that time period. Ten days, he said. Ten days, Lord, have mercy. You're going to suffer with it for ten days. He says, if you would just be faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So literally, that could be translated to say that it is going to feel like literal death. It is going to feel just that hard. It's going to feel just that bad, y'all. I'm trying to teach y'all how to make it through life. Because if you think that everything is going to be a bed of roses, and if you don't know how to handle tribulations, if you don't know how to deal with situations when they come, then everything that you have said about the Lord is going to be in vain. I'm sorry to have to tell y'all that. But everything that you said about him is going to be in vain. All of your who she couldn't abanda. All of your God, I love you. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Oh God, I I, I live for you. All of that's going to be in vain if you don't know how to go through these valleys of shadows of death. Every bit of it is going to be in vain. Every bit of it. Because he clearly says here that there are going to be some tribulations. There is going to be, but he gives a time limit, which means that he has only allowed Satan. I wish y'all would make love to these scriptures like I do. Lord have mercy. He gives him a time limit to say, listen, you're only going to be able to do that to them for 10 days. Only 10 days are they going to have to deal with this. And if they are faithful unto death, which means that I'm willing to die for you, God, just like we would say, you know how we always holler, for God I live and for God I die. You know, quick to holler that. You know what I'm saying? But he says, will you be faithful unto death? So it doesn't mean that death is going to come, but will you be faithful unto the point of death? Unto the point where it feels like death? Unto the point where it feels like you just can't hold on no more, like you have taken all that you could take. He says, if you will, then he gets to the last part of verse uh, verse 10 and says, I swear I'm going to give you a crime of life at right now. You think you're living, but you're going to live after the pain. Oh my God. 
Your life is going to come to you after the pain. God, help me on this evening, Lord. Life is going to come to you after the pain. Lord, help me. I do. I got some people that are willing to allow pastor to help them to learn how to deal with things and move to after the pain.